Welcome to another episode of The Modern Moron. Kind of a hodgepodge for you today, including the etymology of the word hodgepodge, which is a kind of stew, especially, quote, one made with goose, herbs, spices, wine, and other ingredients. Earlier, it was an Anglo-French legal term, meaning collection of property in a common pot, before dividing it equally. Immediately, that doesn't make sense to me. So first, it was a legal term, meaning a collection of property, and then it became goose stew? Do you see how I can take a throwaway thing like a definition and turn it into a rabbit hole? Now you know why I sit in my home all day, every day, and am basically a hermit. What a okay. loser. <clears throat> Among the other nonsense the senator and I discussed briefly are... Item number one. White privilege should not include males under five foot eight who are bald. Number two. The Kansas City Chief's name is racist and needs to be changed. Item number three. A buccaneer is a racist term. Number four. Rape is okay if it's in the name of freedom. Seriously? Paul Revere was gay. Item number six. Super Bowl advertising costs this year. Number seven. SKD Knickerbocker is not a brand of pants at The Gap, it's a political consulting firm. We start off with the senator playing Alone Again Naturally by Gilbert O'Sullivan, as if that's a great idea for starting off the show. After that, we mainly try to stay away from politics and talk about the Super Bowl, which is obviously over now, but we keep going back to politics like a couple of moronic moths drawn to a flame. No offense to any moths who may be listening. About 30 minutes in, the senator goes off on a jag about Alex Padilla. Who is Alex Padilla? I'll tell you. Alex Padilla is California's former Secretary of State, now Senator in Washington, D.C., taking Vice President Kamala Harris's place. Here is our senator's beef with the newly appointed Senator Alex Padilla. During Padilla's time in office as the Secretary of State, he awarded a contract for $35 million to an organization called SKD Knickerbocker which is a public affairs and political consulting firm that specializes in working for Democratic Party politicians. SKD Knickerbocker created a voter outreach campaign called Vote Safe California. At least some of the funds to pay them came from the CARES Act, which is the Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security CARES Act. Did the campaign cost $35 million? I don't know. But guess who is very closely tied to President slash Grandpa Joe? SKD Knickerbocker. In fact, Anita Dunn, who is one of the firm's partners and founding members, was part of the Biden campaign and per the New York Times was elevated during 2020 to essentially having effective control of the campaign. How can you do a thing like this? So the senator is going to tell you later that California Secretary of State Alex Padilla paid SKD Knickerbocker $35 million for their invoices by using local funds, which included federal money allocated through the Coronavirus CARES Act. And he didn't have the authority to do it. So one might make the claim that coronavirus relief funds were indirectly tied to the Biden campaign. I wouldn't make that claim. But there are a number of Republicans in Washington, surprise, who are asking about it and apparently are not getting answers. So that is what you will hear our senator get teed off about. Here's what teased me off about this story. When I went to research this, and we're talking more on research, not journalism, I searched and searched and searched, and the only recognizable news source I could find, not credible news source, recognizable news source I could find was Fox News. Well, of course Fox News is going to run a slanderous story on a Democrat, and I'm not interested in that. So I kept searching Alex Padilla, Alex Padilla plus $35 million, Alex Padilla plus the Help America Vote Act. And finally, when I combined Alex Padilla with the CARES Act, I finally found a news story from Newsweek magazine. Hell, I even wrote to the journalist who wrote the goddamn article because, not surprisingly, both the offices of Mr. Padilla and Governor Gavin Newsom did not have a response at the time of the article's publication. You're putting me to sleep. Will I hear back from the journalist? I don't know. Have you left this stupid podcast a good rating or made a comment? Well, there's your answer. So what pisses me off about this story is that the always accused liberal media and most news sources are left-leaning. It's a goddamn fact. They don't choose to cover a story when it's about a Democrat, about their own position on the political spectrum. 
And if you tack on that the Democrat is a Latino who is the first Latino to represent California in the Senate, ooh, that might not be worth the blowback. Let's leave that one alone. Let's just wait it out. So here for you is the Modern Morons clunky episode with lots of Valentine's love sent straight to you with a kiss. Thank you for listening. If I'm not feeling any less I promise myself to treat myself to what is it at my time. Climbing to the top, throw myself off. For two, make it clear to who the one like when you're shattered, something in the lurch. After church, where people say, my God, that stuff shoots to him up. No point in us. Alone again, naturally. Okay. Always alone again, naturally. Oh, no. Are you talking about me or you? A hundred percent me. Oh, poor, poor Senator. Why are you alone again? Again? I'm alone all the time. Are you kidding me? You're so... What what are you talking about? Quit talking in riddles. What what are you talking about? (laughs) Why did you want me to call tonight? And look, this is duly noted. This is the second time that I've been on time. And that I haven't stood you up. Outstanding. Almost in, almost in a row. Should I should I be just flabbergasted by that? Or shouldn't I expect that? You've become a priority in my life, my fine <laughs> friend. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know what else to say, but thank you. I mean, I am alone, but you're it. You're all I got. How is it, how is it that you're alone? Oh, you know, I'm just... I don't know. What do you want me to say? There's... What? Is your wife and child not there? Yeah, they're here. Yeah. <laughs> then how is it that you're alone? <laughs> you're speaking metaphorically? It's just me and my best friend floating at the bottom of this glass. That's me. Okay. You got hmm. yourself a nice little Manhattan there? No, I made a um I made a uh, brandy sidecar actually. Now what is a sidecar? So you could use scotch, you could use um whiskey. Well, now I forgot the second ingredient. It's only two. Jesus, Mother Mary and Joseph. I used to like uh, a rusty nail. Oh, that's a man's drink right there. <laughs> that that's is a Scotch man's drink. Scotch and Drambuie, correct? Yeah, that's a man's drink. Be careful. That, that's a fully loaded cocktail. No <laughs> doubt about it. That's why I don't drink anymore. Yeah. That's, but uh, it's I'm so funny you mention that because that's like... Full metal jacket. <laughs> man, that's a... If you look that up, they're like, whoa, slow down, cowboy, because that's a big, that's a big man drink. I yeah. like it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. My name is Barney, and I'm an alcoholic. I haven't hooked up my microphone. I hope you don't mind. I mean, it's just. Uh, I might as well get it back then. You might as well give it back to me so my daughter well, can use it for her online well, gaming. Well, I was almost going to do it. To, I had time to do it today, but I just didn't. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll, okay. Next time. I promise. I promise. Okay. What's on your um, Caucasian board? You know what? I tried to have nothing. I'm so... D- By the way, uh, the ingredients for a sidecar is brandy, That's, orange yeah. liqueur, which could either be Cointreau or Grand Marnier is an orange liqueur as well. I, I'm using Grand Marnier, actually. Okay. Yeah. That sounds That's delicious. Like it's, um, it is quite, really, really good. Quite similar to, to a rusty nail in that it's booze, 80 proof booze with an 80 proof booze <laughs> mixer right we have a, a blood orange tree and i'm using a blood orange as the oh, of course you can't just use the regular orange oh no we have to use, have to use blood orange bro. so okay. if you uh brandy sidecar if you ever go to um oh coronado really smacking your lips a lot too damn it where um if you go to coronado uh and you read about marilyn monroe that was her that was her number one drink was the uh brandy sidecar, sidecar. yeah sidecar with a couple of quaaludes Yep, and John nice Kennedy humping her, humping away. <laughs> okay. So you said what is on my agenda? I try not to have an agenda. I mean, I could bring up something, but I, I, 
I don't, I'd rather not. What do, do you have something you'd like to say? Did you about? break something again? Did you throw your phone? Did no. you crash your truck? God, Did you no. Um, no. get fired from? God damn it! <laughs> no. Okay. Well, then everything's good. <laughs> everything's good. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. Try, trying I to shouldn't make any avoid talking about politics. No, I'm, I'm all, I'm all good. No, I don't want to really talk about God. The poly. Can we talk sports terrible. Super Bowls tomorrow? Sure. Yeah. Th- there you go. Uh, we got. Although that'll immediately become political. Well, but course. go ahead. Of course. Because Roger Goodell, the super spreader, I mean, Super Bowl, the uh, commissioner of the uh, National Football League came out today and finally threw out some support for Colin Kaepernick today. Yeah, to, uh, yeah, yesterday, I think they were interviewing him, you know, the whole media crap they go through the week before the Super Bowl, that crap. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And he finally comes out and says, yeah, I really made a mistake. I should have listened to Colin, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, right. OK, that's because your viewership is down, you dumbass. That's all you're doing. Is, he's a white, is football privileged, down? white, privileged, middle-aged. I don't even think he's middle-aged. Jesus, he's young. How old is he? He ain't not that old. What is his name? Roger Goodell. How old is he? Goodell is not that I don't know. I bet. I bet. Look him up. Mid-50s, maybe. Maybe. Roger Goodell. No, I think he's in his. Roger, 61. No way. Really? Wow. Okay. I thought he was around 55. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. He's still white privilege. You know, can I, can we, I was thinking about white privilege. Like I can't criticize anything because of white privilege. I would like to say your white privilege. If you're a white male over five, eight <laughs> or five, nine, and you have a full head of hair. Well, like if you're f-ing short and bald, I'm, that's, that's not white privilege. <laughs> Well, I'm not white. That's not. That's, that's not privilege. That's gonna... Being short and bald. <laughs> that... Please do not become alarmed. I'm not sick. I'm not a racist. <laughs> I'm just bald. It's gonna. It's gonna rule out uh, you, Jason Alexander, and um, Don, thank you, and Don Rickles. <laughs> but he was Jewish. Awesome. So nah, he's got a pass. He's Jewish. Don Rickles was was uh, Jewish. I believe he was Jewish. Okay. Yes. Okay, yeah. fantastic. You and uh, I just think that part of white privilege is like if you're short, you're not privileged. If you're bald, you're not privileged. Of course, everybody's a snowflake. Why did I even bring that up? <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ. Well, let's, politics. Let's, let's move back into the Super Bowl. Let's move back. In. Okay, Super Bowl. The old man. The old man against the young gun. Yeah. Uh, do you have a preference? I really don't. I may not even. No, I'll probably I really don't have it on and I'll keep the volume down and, you know, just kind of keep track of it. But I'm I'm not excited about it. Who is? I, mean, I think I'd like for the first time. I think I'd like to see Brady win to show that, you know, he could, one year is is this his second year with the uh, Buccaneers? It's his second year, isn't it? Or is it uh, first? second? I believe it's his second year. Yeah. No. OK. God dang it. If it's his first year, he's a straight up monster stud. I think it's a second year, but I would have to say, God dang it. I keep smacking my lips. Um, I would have to say if I had to lean towards one or the other, I'm leaning towards Mr. Brady. Yeah. I'd like to, well, one, like, wow, the guy's like, old for one. And two, he leaves a team that literally took him to postseason play. What yeah. every year for <laughs> yeah, only two years, they didn't make it to postseason right, play. Right. Yeah. I, I agree. And I, adamantly against the Kansas city. I won't even say their, their name because it's racist. So I'm. Oh, stop. No, stop it. You're so full of shit. Uh, I see Brady. Are you with kidding the me about the native Cherokee American? One, if, I, if you're native, I have an eighth Cherokee running through my veins. Okay. He's making it about himself, folks. It's shocking. I'm just telling you. Okay. They're a racist okay. game. Well, you know what? I've got 0.5% uh, percent or, one percent uh sub-saharan african uh congolese in me so did you say condoleezza say, what did you say? congolese oh i thought you said condoleezza. In, i thought you said you had condoleezza <laughs> condoleezza rice okay condi okay Ooh. um jesus christ <laughs> they are a racist team they need to change their name and the buccaneers mm, yeah maybe buccaneers that's a pirate what how is that they you're raped, kidding me right they raped women and pillaged villages, stole. So did New England Patriots. 
Uh, in the name of freedom, for Christ's sake. Excuse me. Oh, so if you rape someone in the, yes, name, the name of freedom, of freedom. it's okay? It's, Stop it's it. Like, really? Stop it. Okay. Glad to, good to know. Mental note taken. If I'm raping someone, let me write it down, in the name of freedom, it's okay. And where, and really, what patriots in Boston and in our independence, where, when did that happen? Come on. Give me some, give me some facts. Never. Rape? Yeah. Paul Revere was was gay. Everybody knows that. That was gay rific. Really? Well, I, I I did not know that. <laughs> Paul Revere was gay. I well, maybe he was bi. You're just you're just you're just throwing things out now. You're, you're, We're not going politics. Let's let's circle back to let's circle back to the Super Bowl. So okay. most people watch the Super Bowl because of the commercials. I have no interest because you're gonna, you're going to see. I believe advertisers have are backing off this year in favor of advertising for the coronavirus and uh, uh, back vaccinations and that type of thing. Really? I could be wrong, but I thought I read somewhere that uh, this is not a banner year for Super Bowl ads. I could be wrong. I would imagine you, you are correct because every year they come out with, Oh no, it's a, you know, a million dollars for a 30 second commercial. I don't know what, what Mm -hmm. is now but i haven't heard anything about that this year nothing i'm assuming everything's half off would be my guess that's entirely possible <laughs> why don't we advertise for our podcast why didn't you think about that why didn't we throw out an ad because i don't make enough money to, to, to do that <laughs> I, okay <laughs> super bowl advert this is the boston herald oh super bowl patriots. advertising back to the patriots huh Mm -hmm. Back to the Super Bowl advertising will look different this year. I'll just read the first part. Some of the most familiar Super Bowl advertisers might be sitting out this year's game, but advertising is still virtually sold out, according to Viacom CBS. Budweiser and Coke will not be advertising on the Super Bowl, and Pepsi will not run in-game ads, but will continue to sponsor the Super Bowl halftime show. But other brands, including Chipotle and DoorDash, have said to count them in, according to Adweek. Wow. So the traditional, you know, Budweiser. And the Clydesdale. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not this year, apparently. Um, oh, God, I was going to say, um, ah, and I, I totally blanked on oh, what I was just going to say. It, just, it, goes, it goes away really fast. Did, 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 did it give an amount? It? Did it give an amount? Did it say? Oh, I could, I could look that up. I, I was just curious if, if things are as, you know, whatever it was, million dollars for a 60 second commercial, probably more. I don't know. It's crazy. Stupid. Stupid crazy. It was like a million dollars for 30 seconds. Super Bowl ad costs. This is from Newsweek. John Cena has teamed up with Mountain Dew to give away $1 million to an eagle-eyed viewer who tweets the exact number of Mountain Dew major melon bottles spotted in the 30-second Super Bowl commercial. Boring. Who cares? <laughs> okay. So just how much does a Super Bowl commercial cost this year? The cost of a Super Bowl commercial initially started at $5.6 million. What? CBS opened the bidding at $5.6 million, but only sold out in late January, which is a long time for the commercials to take to sell out compared to last year when Fox sold out in November. Wait, back up. Did you? I don't even know what who's broadcasting the Super Bowl. I believe it's CBS. The Caucasian Broadcasting Service. I can't believe. I had no idea. I thought it was going to be on, you know... Fox or whatever. Wow. No. CBS is... In 2020, the ads also cost $5.6 million, a jump from the $5.1 to $5.3 million price tag in 2019. Wow. You got to love capitalism. I do. Just saying. I think it's great. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Five million plus dollars. You know, your daughter's uh, not a capitalist. You know, I really enjoyed the podcast you did with her. I really, I thought, that, I mean, well, other than that, you guys ripped on me for most of the podcast. But other than that. No, no, actually, we spent maybe a half a minute on no, you. No, you didn't. You guys talked me. about, oh, oh, I did this. And I did that. No, not really. Not yeah. really. We talked about the Beatles. We talked about college. Okay. She's a, a big Bernie supporter. Yeah, I don't think which, she really which tells is. You that she's a, uh, she is a, what do they call it? Uh, I believe. In democratic socialism, social for working people, democracy. not billionaires. Yeah. Democratic socialism. That's it. Democratic yeah. socialism. That's what you believe. Until it comes to me paying for her tuition. 
then she's a cop. <laughs> <laughs> or her phone bill, or her food bill, and everything else well, that I pay for. Mm-hmm. Then she becomes like, well, it's a capitalist. Yeah, I'm a capitalist. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay, whatever. <laughs> Okay, my fault. I brought up politics. See? Like, <laughs> why do I keep doing that? I need to either have a rubber band around my wrist or uh, maybe I should get an electric shock. Oh, there's just so much. There's so much in politics Everybody. right now. I mean, God, there's just so much, old man. But we're going to stay out of it. So I can't name one player on the Kansas City Native American. Oh, I can't. I can't. I can't. I, can't even, I don't even know who that – I know the kid. He's a young guy, the quarterback, but I can't. I don't even know who it is. I can name – one player on the box, and of course that's Brady. That's it. That's all I know. One player. Gronkowski came over with him. He's their tight end. Are you kidding me? Really? I thought he retired. Yeah, he did. He came out of retirement to go back and play with. Did you hear with Tommy? You should look this up, old man. I have you should look it up. Okay. You look okay, it up. You got finger. Oh no, no. I take it back. Your fingers are like sledgehammers. On I the know. Keyboard. You always yell at me. You're yelling at me all the time. You make me feel inadequate. Oh, um. God. You want me to look it up? I I had I had heard from somebody else, this is secondhand information, that the Niners turned down Tom Brady, that Brady wanted to go to the Niners. Back when they were in drafting days? Well, no, when he was when he was leaving the Patriots. He wanted to retire and finish out his career in the Bay Area because he's a NorCal kid, right? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Okay, I had heard that. And the Niners organization turned him down. You want me to look it up? I'll look it up. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Um here we go. <laughs> Are you trying? No. You're trying. <laughs> Tom Brady. Uh, San Fran. Jesus Christ. Are you wearing concrete gloves? <laughs> there was an article. Should the 49ers regret passing on Tom Brady? This was January. Well, it's easy to say yes now. This was January 26th of this year. So I had never heard this. The expressed interest is well known at this point, as well as Brady himself reportedly having mutual interest. Okay. He's off to, God, this is his 10th Super Bowl. That's pretty freaking amazing. I mean, there's no doubt he's he's the greatest. Yeah. I mean, you just can't argue that. Oh, uh, yeah, this is too long. I don't want to bore you with all this. But it does say the 49ers should have signed Brady. Super Bowl windows do not last forever. And with him as the quarterback, he maximizes the opportunity. That's more of an editorial. I want facts. You know, journalists are like whores. You know, they just wow. they just dress better. They're still whores. God, all of them are just absolute whores. Really? Really? Yes. Every single journalist is a whore. I'm gonna make a- so so the story you're just reading. What what's the source? What it, what publication? It's called Fan Nation. Okay, well, Fan Nation. They're they're of course. You got to go to reputable yeah, but publications. Still whores, man. You don't have to try as they're hard. They're all still whores. What? They're whores. They're all whores. They're selling themselves all the time. Ugh. Mm. Mm. They're as bad, and I won't say it, but they're as bad as the other profession. Politicians. Oh, you said it. I didn't. <laughs> you know, I keep thinking about something. A guest of ours said, the professor, that being Paul, our IT professor, he said, unfortunately, we live in a society where you have to make money. Of course. Money drives everything. Yeah. Money buys everything. It buys power and influence, and then influence and power gets attracts money, and you got to have it. Right. But a few minutes ago, you said, I love capitalism. Yeah. But- Is capitalism really? H- hold on. I'm sounding I'm sound like a, a, a communist, but um, I'll talk while you're making a bunch of noise in the background. Yeah, well, my wife's printing something, so now it's screwed it up. So hold on. But I also heard something in the news recently, and they were talking about developing the uh, the vaccines for coronavirus. And towards the end of the interview, the host said something about, would would money help speed this thing up? And the doctor talking said, Money always helps speed up the process of developing medical vaccines. And, and if we had the best society possible, whether it's democracy or a hybrid of democracy, whatever, should money really be driving healthcare? Uh, no, absolutely not. 
It should be. It should. It should. Yeah, it should okay. be the best. And, uh, you know, vaccination. It should be. The, the, and it should be. It should be available to everyone, yeah. right? Regardless of your wealth or whatever. Well, I mean, you could go to the justice system, and I mean, if you have money, you can make bail. If you don't have money, you can't make bail, right? You could. Uh huh. Uh huh. That's well, God, that's a real rabbit hole, my friend. I don't want to go. Well, God, yeah. it really is. Nobody wants to. That's what old Bernie says, right? He's the the. Uh, but, but the thing, the thing with uh, Bernie is he wants to use my money, and if I work hard for my money, that's my money. Why doesn't he use right? somebody else's money? Why does he have to use mm -hmm. my money? Yeah, I hear you. I mean, that's the bottom line, right? Well, if everybody gets using money, you're talking about taxes, right? Uh, yeah. Hold on. But if everybody's taxed at the same rate, then isn't it equal? Like if I make. $50,000 a year and I get taxed at 10% and you make $20 million and you get taxed at 10%. Flat tax. That's fair and equitable, isn't that's it? Or am I, I would, am I, what am I missing? No, I would be totally in support of that. A flat tax. But that's never going to happen. No. Because, because, you're, because the idiot politicians are never going you. to. The whores. The whores. That, that would be like, yeah, that would be like saying, oh, I don't want to get lobbied by the f***ing tax yeah. industry. Tax preparation industry. And the flat tax, you're right, old man. That is that is a very equitable way to do it. If I want to be Joe Blow and I want to make 50 grand a year, okay, and I don't want to do anything else, I'm happy. I'm, I'm a happy, happy man making $50,000 a year. I pay taxes on mm -hmm. that 50. But if I want to really be this go getter, I'm going to go out, I want to, I'm going to invent something, blah, blah, blah. Well, then, you know, I'm motivated to go out and do that. And I pay. Mm -hmm. tax on that there should be an added value tax and a flat tax but it would destroy well first of all the irs goes away because you don't need them anymore mm -hmm. they're gone the whole fine with me could you, yeah but could you imagine removing a federal agency oh my god that's the end of the world no they just want to create another one that's what we do that's what the politicians do they create yep. more not less we should give awards to politicians who write the least amount of laws, but we praise those who write the most amount of laws, right? Oh, I'm, my name's on that. Oh, I'm, I'm, my signature's on that. I think we should do this. I think, right. we, I think dogs should have to have their tails cut off because, you know, when they sh it doesn't get on their tail now. So let's cut off their fucking tails. I mean, that. We're talking politics. We're talking politics. God damn it. Get out of that. Get out! <laughs> Since we're, can I just say, oh God, it's Grandpa Joe Biden. You're a cheat and a swindler, Mister. Let's start the healing. Let's come together. Let's start the healing. Let's reach across mm -hmm. that aisle. First fucking thing he passes. First thing to go to Congress, goes to the Senate. Did one fucking no. Republican vote? No. Not one. So, Mister, reach across the aisle, Mister. Let's heal everything with his. $20 trillion, whatever it is, $1.9 trillion, not one Republican, not even, not even Mitt Romney, the most reasonable Republican there, not one Republican could say, okay, I can get on board with that. Wouldn't, if you're really reaching across the aisle, wouldn't you call a meeting with your most Amen. liberal Republicans, yeah. Mitt Amen. Romney and I think that Gallup in um, Maine, I would say, what would it take for you to vote for this? And let's at least get the most liberal forward thinking republicans at least get them on board with it so you can say look i tried but nope you won. I had to get the vice president over there to fucking what rubber stamp right. it. go back to okay let, i'll give you two examples one going back to a barry obama administration when he passed obamacare right it was supported by 100 percent of the democrats not one republican not one in congress wait voted wait a minute wasn't didn't um not one it was a guy from arizona no no that's the, the senate the... that's john mccain the senate I'm talking, I'm okay talking okay about... but he did vote for yeah, it. yeah right? before it went to the house and went to congress okay and it, got, it passed without okay. one support of a republican not one then it went to the senate and that all happened and then you go to donald trump the trumpster Jesus. and he passes the tax bill, right? Uh, one of his big accomplishments at the beginning of his administration. Not one mm -hmm. Democrat supported it. That's where we're at, old man. Of course, you can't do that. 
you've got to reach across the aisle and bring in some other vote. And that's you, what you're talking about right now is exactly what happened with this pandemic bill. What, what's the name of this one now? You know, uh, I mean, I don't know. And you know what? Can I say Jesus. Um, that I was listening to an interview, one of his Grandpa Joe's people were, you know, on NPR of all things, right? They're the most likely to be easy on. Yeah. She's touting, it's, we got to go big. We got to go yeah. big. Yeah. Got to go more, not less. And the woman interviewing said, but you haven't even, sp- how do you know, how do you know you need that much? You haven't even spent everything from the last stimulus package. Oh, well, well, we, and, and she pressed. I said, I'm going to have to press you on this. How do you know it's not enough? If you haven't even spent everything from the last one. Exactly right. Exactly (laughs) right. He had a perfect opportunity to prove it, that he's walking the walk and not just talking the talk Mm -hmm. by getting a couple of Republicans to go with him. But nope, nope. I'll just send a vice president over there and she'll cast the deciding vote. We need to pass this bill before we know what's in it, before we read it. That's Nancy Pelosi, right? For Obamacare. We need to pass this bill before, I mean- why read it, right? Or let's just get it passed. Why read it? Don't mess with me. Okay. That's, why I'm, that's why I hate the Dems and I hate the R's, period. Fucking idiots. Until we get some sort of middle ground and get out of this politics of the right and left, we're going to go nowhere. I mean, you have the same thing in our great state of California with our awesome governor. Here's the guy who appoints... Padilla for the Senate, right? He's taken Kamala Harris's spot, right? So he leaves California with an illegal mm, spending of about, what was that, $28 million? So, so maybe 29, 30 million, whatever. It's just a couple million dollars one way or the other. It doesn't matter. But he spends that money without authorization, right? He's as secretary, he was uh, secretary of state. Who? Um, Padilla. So he gets appointed. The the uh, he's Hispanic. Good for him. Love him. Love it. What's that got to do with it? Because everybody puts a label on it. You know, is he busy? Is, is he white? Is he Hispanic? Is she black? Blah, 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 blah. Everybody wants to put a label on it, right? But mm-hmm. he's rewarded. Rewarded for screwing. I mean, bending over and sticking a broomstick right up our ass. He's rewarded for that. idea. Right, I mean, dry hump. We're not even not even greasing it up. Dry humped us, and then he's rewarded with the "I'm going to be United States Senator now." So Gavin Newsom awards him, and he leaves California with this hole with money that he's illegally spent on the get out vote. You know, my air quotes that I'm doing right now. Get out the vote, which happens to be Grandpa Joe's. I don't care if they supported Grandpa Joe. But you spent money that wasn't f***ing yours, and now you're rewarded for it. That's where we're at. So bend over and take it. Whether you want it or not, you're going to get it. Period. <laughs> In the name of freedom. And, and you know what? What's going to happen? Did you, hear what I, did you see what I just did there? Well, man, what's going to happen? What's going to happen to Padilla? <laughs> you didn't li- Hey, did you see what I just did? I did a call back to your earlier joke. In the name of freedom? <laughs> Rape in the name of freedom. <laughs> well, a little love. Oh, Put a boom. <laughs> hey, oh, tough crowd. <laughs> Get no respect. <laughs> Just trying to pull it out of the, the pol- political toilet. politics. It's obviously about money and power. And you know, I do believe there are people who get into politics with the absolute best of intentions, but it becomes obvious very quickly that you can do more good with more money. And if you just cut a corner here or look the other way there, you can get some more money to do more good. But things get cloudy and murky, and the corner you cut to help your good cause might be damaging someone else's cause that they consider good. It's just, it's gross. I don't see how politicians keep up the energy to exist in that toxic environment. I guess they just have to 
keep fighting? Is that what they have to do? Keep fighting? Oh, that's, that's inciting violence. I wonder what the egos are like in the Senate. I mean, we know the Lindsey Grahams and the Nancy Pelosi's and the Ted Cruz's have this elevated sense of themselves and, and this grandiose grandstanding. And they couch it in their religion or some other pretentious bullshit. But the ego is there puffing up every day how their message is more righteous and the other party's message is so damaging to the country. Ah, what a happy note to end on. How about congratulations to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? And let's not pay attention to the impeachment trial going on in D.C. with one side trying to keep a sociopath from holding public office ever again and the other side upholding the freedom of speech for a violence-inciting sociopath who says in his speech to walk to the Capitol peacefully. But he's responsible for the violence. Don't get me wrong. I can't stand Trump as a president. But logically, how do you convict a guy for inciting violence when he literally says it in his speech, go peacefully? He is so toxic to this country, but don't hate him. Because once again, he covered his bases, maybe accidentally, he covered them enough to elude conviction. They don't call him the Teflon Don for nothing. And be very stable, genius. And okay. with a rim shot and a silly sound effect, we can all end with a chuckle or not. And thank you for listening to The Modern Moron. Have a great week, America. Perhaps the most remarkable finding in the Olympic level meditators has to do with what's called a gamma wave. All of us get gamma for a very short period when we solve a problem we've been grappling with, uh, even if it's something that's vexed us for months. We get about uh, a half second of gamma. It's the strongest wave in the EEG spectrum. We get it when we bite into an apple or imagine biting into an apple. And uh, for a brief period, a split second, uh, inputs from taste, sound, smell, vision, all of that come together in that imagined bite into the apple. But that lasts very, very short period uh, in an ordinary EEG. What was stunning was that the Olympic level meditators, these are people who've done up to 62,000 lifetime hours of meditation, their brainwave shows gamma very strong all the time as a lasting trait, just no matter what they're doing. It's not a state effect. It's not during their meditation uh, alone, but it's just their everyday state of mind.